All right, guys, it's Stevie Stroh, and I'm back for a, an additional video on some insanely, I don't know if we're going to call it advanced, but let's call it highly supplementary tweaking things you can do to your cocoa pie. And this is going to fo focus specifically on turning your cocoa pie 3 image into what I call the cocoa pie game console. And all of these videos started because I had done this about three or four days ago when I decided I wanted to start playing the Coco in my living room and how can I make it easy for me and I started doing it and just tweaking it and playing with it and testing it and I got it all working exactly how I wanted it and as I was telling everybody about it they're like man you gotta you know show us how you did it or make a video so other people can figure that out so when I was talking to Ron Klein about it and a few other people they're like yeah you need to make a video and of course that opened up about a four day long can of worms of me trying to get to the point where I could do this on a clean already uncontaminated Raspberry Pi um, image which is what I'm about to show you now so let's look at some of the pieces of the puzzle what I can't show you because the cord isn't long enough I can't show you my Raspberry Pi 3 but that's obviously part of it what I'm using for my keyboard right now this is not new this is probably several years old but this is a good old-fashioned Logitech um, wireless keyboard it's got a little mini um, you know USB dongle that you plug into a computer it is like 2.4 gigahertz wireless technology it's not Bluetooth it's just plug-and-play good old-fashioned wireless keyboard this works on a Raspberry Pi or anything else with a USB port what I'm doing right now because I just happen to have uh, access to this device but this is a Microsoft Xbox 360 wireless controller receiver so this is basically the the dongle the receiver part that you would plug into any computer via a USB port and it ends up taking a an Xbox 360 wireless game controller and turning it into a wireless USB gamepad so this is my receiver and this is just a stock generic Xbox 360 uh, wireless gamepad and one of the things you'll notice here is that right here is the little illuminated circle there's four quadrants here and you basically have to kind of pair this to the receiver so you press down the pairing button on the receiver and then you tap on a little um, uh, kind of synchronized button on here and it will find itself it will form that partnership and it will take up one slot of an of the identity and so this is now basically player one or joystick one I could if I had another one of these which I'm sure I do somewhere I could pair a second one it would show up in the second quadrant and that would be actually player two joystick two and if you wanted to get really fancy you could even configure MAME input mappings to map to two different joysticks so if you wanted to play some two-player Coco games on your couch with two different wireless controllers on your big screen TV you can certainly do that but for the sake of this video, I'm going to show you some ideas I came up with this past week on just mapping ga uh, game controllers and joysticks and D-pads and buttons into MAME, the user interface, and into the Coco emulations to try to joystick enable uh, a color computer as much as possible to create a gaming console experience where you can drive most of what you want to do strictly from a joystick especially on the cartridge realm you can you can from a joystick with zero keyboard interactivity you can launch cartridges play the cartridges as long as the cartridge will start with a button you can start it I'm even going to show you how you can map certain actions on this uh, to to press keys so if you needed to press one or two for player one or two we can map things on our joystick to do that I'm going to show you some advanced stuff where I even came up with an idea in the game Polaris because Polaris requires or the players requires three different keys on your keyboard uh, Z X and Charlie to fire from your three stations I'm gonna map those those three buttons to up here to my blue yellow and red buttons where I can then from my joypad fire from three different stations uh, on here so there's gonna be a lot happening in this video so stay tuned alright we are looking at the Raspberry Pi Coco Pie 3 image and what you're actually looking at right now is a sneak peek at the 2020 image the um, the earlier video I recorded today was showing you how to set up the Coco Pie in general and that was based on the current public downloadable 2019 image 
this is a sneak peek at the latest greatest 2020 image which will hopefully be available soon so we are going to be taking a fairly deep dive i'll try to be as brief as possible but we're going to be doing a lot and so be prepared for a good 30 minute wild ride on um, MAME joystick mapping. So you gotta be a special kind of crazy and committed to wanna be able to do this, but hopefully it will be worth your time. So we are going to be modifying a lot of things within MAME. And before we can do that, we have to make one change to a MAME any file to allow us to customize individual machines and their configurations. We're going to be making custom configurations for the Coco 2 and the Coco 3. And in order to do that, um, we need to tell MAME to let us do it. So I'm going to show you what I need to do. Right now, we are at the main menu. I'm just going to hit Escape to get down to the Linux prompt. And you should be in a .mame folder. And this is the folder where MAME lives. And we need to modify a file that's called MAME.ini, or the MAME any file. And I'm going to use a text editor known as Nano to do that. And by the way, if I look like I know what I'm doing in Linux, it's only because I've been hounding the hell out of Ron Klein for the past four days, and he's been really, really helpful and, and, and patient with me to help me figure out how to do all this kind of stuff here. So. I'm going to hit nano to modify that, and now my big head is in the way. Um, but when I come in here to modify this file, the thing we're going to see right now that we're going to need to change is this line right here that says write config. Currently, write config is at a zero. We're going to delete that, and we're going to type in one. And that is going to allow MAME to write back any custom changes that we are going to make. So now that I've changed that flag and enabled this option, I'm going to hit Control X to exit. It's saying, do you want to save your changes? I'm going to hit Y for yes. It's going to say, what is the name you want to write it to? Accept the default MAME.any. And now we're done. And now we can go back into just type in the word menu. And that will get you back to the main menu. You only need to make that change one time. And everything else we can do, we're going to be doing from very mostly user-friendly menu-based interfaces. For the sake of this demonstration, I am just going to focus on one machine. I'm going to focus on the Color Computer 2. And I'm going to be making certain assumptions that um, this machine is going to be set up for certain games that do not require two joysticks. There are probably, you can count them on one hand. The number of games where even though it's a single player game it would require two uh, joysticks one such example would be something like robotron i believe project nebula required two joysticks there's probably a few others i think there's even like some defender clone from tom mix that would use two joysticks but those games are the exception for the so for the ease of use and simplicity of this i'm going to try to map everything to use my left thumbstick and my A button to do just about everything within the Coco. So whether or not the Coco game itself expected the left joystick or the right joystick, they're both gonna be mapped to the same thumbstick on my Xbox controller, so I don't have to worry about which one is it. It's just going to work. So that's one example of an assumption I'm gonna make. Once you've seen what it's like to peel back the layers of MAME configuration and joystick mapping and how I'm gonna map the joystick to both not only the color computer emulator but even the user interfaces once that um, light bulb has gone off I'm sure you will think of hundreds of ways that you're gonna make this your own and make it not only suit your preferences but the type of controller you have I've chosen this controller because I happen to have one that's wireless and I'm very familiar with this controller but there are all kinds of controllers and as long as it appears as a generic USB or even better Bluetooth device that your Raspberry Pi will recognize as a plug-and-play device, you are going to be golden and then the uh, Raspberry Pi should recognize that controller. And I'm going to show you one other thing before we start because what I have found, and this is a, a challenge with this one, because this thing is wireless and it's running off of batteries. Right now I'm just running off of traditional AA batteries, but this also accepts like rechargeable battery packs. But because this controller is wireless, 
from time to time it goes to sleep if I'm not using it. I have to press the button to turn it back on. When it goes to sleep, the um, the Cocoa Pie will forget it exists. And when MAME is running, MAME is not aware of any plug and play things that are happening under the hood at the uh, operating system level. So you kind of have to make sure that Linux knows your controller is alive and awake before you try to do anything in MAME. So and I'm going to show you a quick program in the utilities menu that's in here, which is a joystick testing routine. And that right now on this current image I have on the 2020 image, that is uh, menu option 34, Bluetooth slash USB game controller. I'm going to hit enter once. It's telling me a little bit of information here. I'm going to hit enter again. And right now what I can see is it is counting through all of the buttons that the Raspberry Pi recognizes on my gamepad, which happens to be 14. As I start moving sticks in different directions and I pull triggers and press buttons, you can kind of see here that um, that the Cocoa Pi, the Raspberry Pi, recognizes my controller. So before you embark on this path of trying to configure MAME, make sure your Raspberry Pi knows about your joystick. Now, if your joystick happens to be hardwired, like a, a direct connected USB joystick, you've got very small risk of it falling asleep or anything else like that, and this would be a non-issue. But if you've got a Bluetooth controller, or in my case here, a wireless controller that might have some battery savings or timeout savings, there's a chance the controller might go to sleep, and depending on the state MAME was in when that happened, MAME may or may not see your controller. So this is a real quick way, uh, troubleshooting tool you can look at to make sure your controller is alive and kicking. I'm hitting control C to get out of that menu thing and I'm just going to type in menu again. So now that we have verified that my Raspberry Pi 3 recognizes my wireless Xbox controller, I'm going to pull up my Coco 2 menu. So where are we? We are in the generic MAME emulation of a standard color computer 2. Where do we go to change things with this boys and girls? Well right now our default is the tab key, right? So the tab key is the default key to bring up our emulation user interface slash menu and we want to change two areas of this and the two areas I'm going to want to change are going to be input general and these changes apply to the entire um, MAME user interface portion of things and then the other one that we're going to do is going to be input this machine and those are specific mappings that relate to the Color Computer 2 emulation versus the MAME user interface options. So the first thing I want to change are some general user interface options. And, and the goal of this is to allow me to use my controller to press a button to bring up this menu, use my D-pad to navigate the menu up and down and be able to press a button to get in and, and launch software. So I can bring up a menu, browse, and launch from my gamepad. That's the first thing I want to enable and that will become a universal thing that will benefit any color computer uh, piece of software that I want to load. So we're going to go to input general and then we're going to go to user interface. And right now what we're going to be looking at are what all of the default mappings are for MAME with um, the user interface and what keys or joysticks or mice it's looking for for certain um, for certain things and I'm going to be changing these based on both my personal preferences and the controller that I have but once you um, see this process obviously you can change them to suit your own preferences and controllers so the first thing that I want to change and remap is the actual pause key and by default the main emulator maps the letter P to pause. By default, when you start typing on your Coco in MAME, every time you press key, you every time you press the P key, you turn the pause on and off. So it's obviously confusing and disruptive. So how do we change things? And I want to caution you, when you go to change certain parts of the user interface, these changes are immediate and you can actually lock yourself out. And I have locked myself out of the user interface many times in the past few days trying to refine this process and record a video to make it easy for you. So I've done all the suffering in advance to make your life easier. You're welcome. So how do we change things? Hit the delete key to clear a mapping. And now what do I want to map 
pause to. How do I map? I hit the enter key. It's now listening for what I'm going to press. I'm going to press the start button, which happens to be on the right hand side of my little Xbox orb button here, because that's usually what you do in an Xbox game. You press the start button to bring up, you know, pause your game and bring up the in game menu. So right now I've mapped pause to just be my start button. It's not going to be looking for or listening to any other key on my keyboard, and that's okay. Now, another thing I'm going to do is machine reset. This resets the entire emulated color computer. This is like pressing the reset button on the back of your case. I'm going to hit delete to clear that mapping. I'm going to press enter to go into listening mode. And in my case here, I'm going to press right bumper, which is joystick button five. So if I ever need to reset my Coco or I'm playing a game and I need to do a quick rage quit, I can just tap on the right bumper and that will um, reset the Cocoa and if you're running on a ROM cartridge it's going to just reboot you right back to the, to the title screen of that ROM cartridge. If you're running a game off of disk that has captured the reset vector like some of these games will let you keep pressing reset to switch between the red and blue colors. If the game allows you to reset and not lose the game then this is a great way to kind of rage quit and just get back to the starting screen. What other keys do I want to map? Another one that I want to map is the actual config menu, which is this menu here. How did I bring up this menu? By default, it is the tab key. So what I want to do right now is I want to clear that out. And what I'm going to show you now is how you can map multiple things to the same function within main. When I go to the config menu, I'm going to press delete to clear it out. Now I want to map it twice. I'm going to hit enter once to map it and I'm going to press the tab key mapping it back to the original key. The second thing I want to map it to now is my what I call my select button which is on the left hand side of my little Xbox orb. And This one here it's called back but I, I refer to that as select start and select. So now I'm going to hit enter again and now I'm going to press the select key. And so now we have two keys mapped to the same function. So in order to bring up the config key, I can now press the select button on my gamepad to do that. Or I can press the tab key on my keyboard to do that. Right. So I have two things mapped to that. So now you're seeing the first indication of how cool it is to be able to use a joystick to navigate your emulated Coco in MAME. So we've made that configuration choice now. The next thing that I want to configure are the user interface keys. Now the user interface keys are dual mapped as they are right now to function with both the arrow keys and a generic joystick one up, down, left, right. What I've seen happen with a lot of analog controllers like Xbox 360s and other controllers that have thumbsticks like this is that you can sometimes get some drift on analog things. And that drift, if you have an analog stick mapped to menus and stuff, that drift can really screw up or completely lock you out of the ability to navigate that menu. So I, I don't want to... Um, use my actual analog stick to um, navigate. I'm going to use my thumb, my, my D-pad here, this, uh, this little digital four-directional digital stick for doing that and that's usually what's known as the hat controller on our, on our um, joysticks. So I need to map and unmap these. I'm going to have to double map them. So I'm going to hit delete to clear out the mapping. I'm going to hit enter on up and I'm going to press up on my up arrow key. I'm going to press enter again and I'm going to press up on my D-pad. Now with this Xbox 360 controller that D-pad up translates to button 13 just so you know. I'm going to do the same thing now with my down key. I'm going to hit delete to clear the mapping. I'm going to hit enter to accept a new map. I'm going to press the down arrow one time. I'm going to hit enter again press down on my D-pad and now you can see here I'm already using my D-pad to move up and down. I just need to repeat that for left and right. I'm going to clear it. Enter map, press left key. Enter map, press left D-pad. I'm going to clear right. Enter map, right arrow. Enter map, right D-pad. I now can use my, my D-pad on my controller 
to move up and down and I can use my select key to turn my menu on and off. We're getting closer to being joystick enabled. What else do I want to do? I want to remap how do I select something on my, um, on my menu. So I want to remap the um, select button. I'm going to go ahead and clear it. I'm going to hit enter to map. <laughs> you see what I just did here? I just screwed myself out of this, right? This is the problem. This is the problem. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, I warned you that you can screw yourself up in mapping this. I've just screwed myself up. All right. Luckily, I didn't have to go too far or spend too much time because MAME does have kind of a built in default option. So if you hit delete one more time, it actually rolls you back to the default mapping. So here's what I want to do. I'm going to try to do this backwards. I'm going to hit enter once and I'm going to map it to button A. Now I'm going to press um, button A again and then press enter. And I've now mapped it to both my button and my enter key. So I've now mapped user interface select key to both the enter key and my button A. Now, user interface cancel. I want to map this to two keys too. I want to go ahead and make the B button cancel. So I'm going to hit enter once and press B button. So right now, which shows up as joystick button one, I'm going to press enter again and I'm going to press escape. So at this point, I can press either the escape key or my B button to get out. So if I want to get out of my menu right now, B button got me out, B button got me out. I can then Hit select, go up and down. If I want to go back to input general, A button to select, user interface, A button to select. I'm now going down here using my gamepad to change these navigations. So I have mapped select, which is like pressing enter to select a menu option. That's button zero, which is my A button. I've mapped cancel to button one, which is my B button. I don't think there's anything else here I need to map. I really don't see anything else that I need to map on my user interface. So I'm going to go ahead and just press the A button here to go back to the, um, the previous menu. I'm now going to use my joypad and go down here again to previous menu. So I have finished mapping this. And you can see here, it's pretty easy now. I can bring up my menu. I can cancel my menu. I can bring up my menu. I can navigate my menu. Pretty nice, right? So now we're going to go to input this machine. And this is where I am going to now be mapping specific game controller buttons, not only to map to the color computer's joysticks where I can use this joystick to replicate Coco joysticks, but I'm going to do some fancy stuff and I'm going to map this joystick to other keys within the Coco to more joystick enable um, games that otherwise would have required the keyboard. And the goal is, is to spend as little time typing and as much time button mashing like we want to do on a game console. So I'm going to go ahead and, and go ahead and hit A to select this option here. And then this is where we can start to map all of the different joystick inputs from your physical controller that you have on your uh, main machine to the actual Coco joysticks that are being emulated on the color computer. And what I want to do to simplify this process for right now is I want to clear all of these out for just the joystick for now. So starting with the right button and then going down the list, I'm just hitting the delete key to clear off all of the mappings. And the last one I will clear is left joystick Y analog decrement. So they're all cleared, they're all unmapped. What I want to go ahead and map is I want to map both my left and right button to button A, which is the green button on your stock Xbox 360 controller. So I'm going to hit enter to listen. I'm going to press A to answer. And I'm going to do the same thing down here for left button. I'm going to press enter to listen. I'm going to press A to answer. I've now mapped both the left and right button of either left or right joystick to the same button on my gamepad. Now we're going to map the X and Y axes 
of the left and right joystick to my single thumbstick. If you wanted to get fancy, you could map the left stick to your left thumb controller, the right stick to your right thumb controller. You could map button A to green and button B to blue, and you could literally play two players um, on one joystick. Or you could get really fancy, and for this Xbox 360 wireless thing, you could map joystick two to your wireless receiver and map the right player to a second physical joystick, either wireless or, or USB, because there's plenty of USB ports. So you can get really fancy. For me being one person with one controller, I want all of the power to be as simple and consistent as possible. So I'm going to hit enter to map the X axis, and I'm just going to tap left on my thumb pad to map the X axis here to the X axis there. I'm going to do the same thing for the Y analog. I'm going to hit enter to map, and I'm just going to push up. And I'm now mapping the Y. Um, it's mapping X and Y to X and Y. We're going to ignore these increment and decrement ones because if you try to map those to something analog and that analog thing is kind of got a spastic fluctuating value that comes through it, you're going to have things flying all over the place that are just going to really confuse you and possibly lock you out of doing things. And so now for consistency's sake, I'm going to do the same thing for my second joystick. And enter to map, move left or right to map the X. Enter to map Y, move up or down to map the Y axis. I have now mapped the same stick and the same button to be compatible with player one or player two on any Coco game I'm gonna play. Boom, mission accomplished. Here's something else I wanna do. I wanna double map some keys that are sometimes used not only in um, uh, games but maybe in making selections from menus. The space key, there are certain games where you have to press the space bar. If it's a keyboard based game, you might have to press the space bar to fire or to jump or whatever the case may be. So I'm going to I'm going to clear the mapping for the space key. I'm going to hit enter to go into listening mode. I'm going to press the space bar one time for one mapping. I'm going to press enter again and I'm going to press my A button for my second mapping. So any keyboard based game on the color computer that recognized the space bar as a for lack of a better term fire button I've now mapped the space bar to also be recognized by me tapping on the A button on my joystick and I'm going to do a similar thing for the enter key to the B button so if I'm using a Coco program that requires you to move up a menu uh, up and down and then press enter to select I'm going to go ahead and do that I'm going to just map that to button B so I'm going to hit delete to clear it Enter to map, hit the enter key one time to map return. Enter to map, hit my B button a second time. Oh my gosh. Let's go down. Um, here's something that I want to do. Um, some games want you to press one or two player in order to start, right? So what am I going to do here? I'm going to map one or two players to moving left or right on my right thumbstick because I'm not using my right thumbstick at all. So when I go to map the one key, let me clear it. Let me hit enter one time and map it to the actual one key. Let me hit enter again and let me map it to left movement on my right thumbstick. Let me go down here to number two. I'm going to clear that out. I'm going to hit enter one time to map it to the same number two. Hit enter again and move it to the right. And now it's here. It says Xbox 360 joystick axis three, receiver plus and minus. So if I move it to the left, which would be the negative, that's like pressing the one key. If I move it to the right, that's like pressing the two key. So if there's any Coco game that says press one or two player to start, boom, I can now do that by flipping my thumbstick. Another thing I want to do now too is I want to map my arrow keys to also recognize my left thumbstick to um, basically joystick enable any game that wasn't designed to use the joystick. So I'm going to have to basically double map all four of my arrow keys. So let me go ahead and just clear them out and let me remap each one. We're going to start with left. I'm going to hit enter one time and map left to the left key. I'm going to hit enter again and map it to left on my thumbstick on my right enter once right key to map enter twice right movement on thumbstick to to it 
We're going to repeat this two more times. Up key, enter once, up. Uh, enter twice, up stick. Down, enter once, down. Enter twice, down stick. Now, we have basically double mapped the four arrow keys on the color computer to also be um, selectable by four directions on our thumbstick. Last but not least, and this is getting slightly custom and slightly specific to just one game, but in the sake of Polaris, which is probably the best missile command clone for the color computer, I'm going to map the three keys that are um, used in that game, which are Z as in zebra, or Zulu, X-Ray, Charlie, right? Your Z, your X, and your C. Those are those three games. I'm going to have to map the C key twice. And how I'm going to do it, just to show you, um, to make it big again, like I said at the top of this video here, I'm going to use these three colored buttons here. So blue will be Z, yellow, which is in the middle, will be X-Ray, and then Bravo, the, blue, the red button on the right, will be my Charlie key. So this is my Z, my X, and my C keys that I'm going to map to those three buttons. So when I'm playing Polaris, I'll be able to use this left thumbstick to aim my, my crosshair and then use three different buttons to fire from the three different missile silos. I know that's getting really, really specific, but this is something that is unique that you can only do in emulation, so why not take advantage of it? So I'm going to go ahead and clear out the C key. I'm going to hit Enter once and then press C for my first mapping. I hit Enter again and press my red button B. Oh my goodness, you know what? I know why. I know why it's doing this. It's doing this because I mapped the B key to interface cancel. So I'm actually canceling what I did. So I need to go back to my menu and I need to redo this. So on input general user interface I need to go down here to um, the user UI cancel and I need to remap that. So I'm going to delete it once. I'm going to hit enter once and map the first key as escape. I'm going to hit enter again and map the second key to left bumper. This should solve that problem. I can now hit left bumper, get out of my menu. Remember, these things are um, really, really specific. If I hit left bumper again, I go back. Now I'm going to go to input this machine. And let's try this again now. Um, I want to, um, maybe enter is not as important, or maybe it is, but let's just try it right now. If I go to hit enter here, I hit enter once, and then I hit enter again, and I hit B, I can. I can now map it to return or my B button. So that was achieving my first objective. Uh, let's now go back down to our Charlie key. I'm going to clear it out. I'm going to hit enter once to map it to C. I'm going to hit enter again to map it to my red B button. Boom. There we go. So now I need to find my, um, my, Z my Zulu and my X-ray keys. So the Zulu key is what I'm going to map to my red X button. I'm going to hit, I'm going to delete it. Hit enter once, map it primarily to the Z key, hit enter again, map it to my blue X button on my Xbox, and then that was the Zulu key on my X-ray key. I'm going to do a similar thing. I'm going to clear it, map it once to X, map it twice to the yellow Y button. And at this point now, I think I've done enough. I'm going to hit left bumper, I'm going to get out of here. I, I've now done all the heavy lifting to configure all of this to do mostly what I want. So right now we're in the Cocoa Pie emulation on a color computer too. I want to load up a cartridge. I'm going to do all of this from the comfort of my controller. You're going to see here both my hands are going to be up here. Nothing's going to be on my keyboard, right? So I am going to hit the select button. I'm going to go to file manager. I'm going to press button A to select. I'm going to go to cartridge. I'm going to choose software list. I'm going to choose Tandy Radio Shack cartridges. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to look for Polaris. And we're going to try out this whole three fire button thing. So we're going to look for Polaris 
We're going to hit A to start, and we should be booting into Polaris. Okay, what does Polaris want me to do? It wants me to press one or two players to start. What am I going to do? I'm going to press left on this stick. Now I have my analog thumbstick to move, and I want to be able to fire from three different missile silos here, from three different submarines. Here's left, here's right, here's center, right? So that is showing you how I can do that. I can hit my right bumper to reset the machine, and then boom, I'm back. Because this is a ROM cartridge, it will reset back to the title screen of my ROM cartridge. If I want to switch cartridges, I'm going to hit the select button. I'll go to File Manager. I'm going to go to Cartridge. I'm going to go to Software List, Tandy Cartridges. And now I'm going to go ahead and scroll down and find my Downland cartridge because the next thing I want to do is finish playing the game of the week this week, which is Downland. I'm going to bring that up. And now we're in Downland. And now, whether or not Downland wanted the left or right joystick, it kind of doesn't matter because it's recognizing my one thumbstick. I can press the button here, and then boom, it is up. So I'm now playing Downland. And as if anybody else has been playing Downland this week, what you'll quickly realize is sometimes even on screen one, something really stupid will happen and annoy you, and you're like, oh, dang it, now I have to start over, and I don't want to have to wait to die 14 times. Guess what? Rage quit button. I hit my right bumper. It has rebooted my Coco, and then boom, I can start over again. So if you find yourself like on chamber three and you're almost out of lives and you don't want to torture yourselves any longer, just hit the rage quit button and start over. Be warned though, when you reboot your cartridge, it also clears out your high score. So if you're tr if you've been getting some decent scores and you're trying to submit your screenshot this week for the high score screen. Um, competition challenge whatever um, you're going to lose that high score every time you reboot but that rage quit button comes in really handy and now the other thing you need to remember to do is if i wanted to boot into my coco next time and not have it be a cartridge i need to remove the cartridge so i need to go to file manager which i'm doing with my d-pad and i need to go to cartridge and then choose empty slot and now i can just back out now i hit left bumper to get out if i hit left bumper again to close my Coco, it will get out. If I launch my Coco again, it should come up and it should just boot to the Coco 2 in the green screen without the cartridge. The, the, the moral of this story is real simple. I am doing almost everything from my joystick, which now I could be sitting on my couch 10 feet away from my big screen TV in my living room and playing Coco games pretty easily. At this time though, in order to load a game off of floppy disk, you would still have to do the, you know, type in the directory command to list it. You'd have to type in loadm to load the file and exec to execute the file to launch it. Once you've launched it, you can probably be completely controller capable and if there's certain games that require certain keys to press, you could find a creative way to map those keys to a particular button or trigger or stick direction on your game controller of choice. But in this case here, if I just want to go back here and I want to close out this video by pulling up a pretty cool cartridge, we will go ahead and we'll go to our cartridge menu and we're going to go to software list, we're going to go to Tandy Color Computer Things and we're going to do like Tim and we're going to play Daggerath, like that idiot in the book, and here we go, Dungeons of Daggerath. There you have it. We have done it. I have shown you more than most people will ever need to see, but I have shown you how to turn your Cocoa Pie into a fairly self-contained and easy-to-use um, game console that can be navigated primarily from a single game controller that could be wired or wireless or Bluetooth, however you choose to control the, the to connect a controller you have, that is up to your imagination and, and what you have access to. But this opens up a lot of possibilities of armchair gaming on our computer, um, on our color computer, in ways that it was just not originally designed to do, but because we're doing this in emulation on new computers, 
now we can. So I hope you enjoyed that. Hopefully this wasn't too long-winded. I realized I made a few mistakes in the process of doing this, but I have honestly been trying to record this video for about four days now and I've had so many challenges and screwing up the interfaces and, and mapping things incorrectly. If I have to record this a 19th time, I'm literally going to have my head explode. So please forgive the few mistakes I made along the way, but hopefully I showed you just how realistic it is to screw yourself out of MAME configurations while you're doing this. But we survived, we got through, we are going to live happily ever after. The last thing I'm going to tell you as well is that um, I need to go ahead and, and unmap this cartridge again, is that these machines are basically... Um, these configurations are per machine. So while I made all kinds of, of changes to the Color Computer 2, depending on how your image is uh, and, and some of the more advanced modes of, of the Cocoa Pie image, when you pull up your Color Computer 2, you're going to have multiple choices. You're going to have a stock Color Computer 2. You might have a Color Computer 2 that has a multi-pack interface on it. You have a Color Computer 2 with a 6309 and all these different things. And each one of those is recognized as a different machine in MAME in some cases, like the Color Computer 2 versus the Color Computer 2 with the Hitachi processor. Those are different computers as far as MAME is concerned. So the fact that I made all these changes to the Color Computer 2 they're not going to carry over to the Color Computer 2 Hitachi, for example. The fact I made all of these changes, these changes are not going to carry over to the Color Computer 3 because each, each machine that MAME creates, it generates its own kind of config file. They're called CFG files. So there's going to be a Coco 2 CFG. So if you wanted to be a little bit clever and you figured out what those were, you could kind of copy and rename them. So if you wanted the same settings to work on your Coco 2 uh, with the Hitachi, you could copy your Coco 2.cfg to Coco 2h.cfg. Getting a little technical, but that can be done. What I'm going to hopefully figure out, when I say figure out, I'm going to pester Ron Klein until he can uh, do it for me, um, but I'm going to see if there's ways we can now somehow create some universal config sharing and cross-pollinations through Cocoa Pie menu options to make this a little bit more user-friendly. So that might be something that comes out of this. And again, these are just insane things that only insane people are going to do, but if you want to do some armchair gaming on your Cocoa Pie, this is something that might benefit you. And I'll just close by just plugging the fact that we've got a Color Computer Discord server that is a great community resource. And so with things like Cocoa Pie and how to use MAME and how to use emulators and DriveWire and hardware projects, if you want to talk to somebody and, get, and share information and get questions answered in a fairly efficient way, Discord is a great way to do that. And that website is um, Discord dot coco talk dot live that'll get you there and thank you for watching look forward to some feedback on this and we'll see you later